Setapp is an app suite for Mac and iPhone. It's sort of like a multi-tool, but instead of pliers and screwdrivers, Setapp connects you to standalone productivity apps without the need to buy each app individually. Setapp connects you to productivity apps like Paste, which keeps track of all the stuff you copy after you've already copied and pasted it. Vivid, which can double your display's brightness. PDF Squeezer compresses PDFs without quality loss so you can email PDFs more easily. And my favorite, PullTube, which lets you download videos from video websites. Setapp connects you to at least 230 of these productivity apps. And these are brand name third party apps like Clean My Mac, which you probably already know about. $9.99 a month gives you access to at least 230 apps, and there's a seven day free trial at setapp.com. Without conflict, our stories are boring, and I pray that this story is a boring one. <laughs> Traffic does not count as a conflict because it's too boring. So there are two reasons why I'm replacing this engine and I'm experiencing them both right now. I'm not even in Pasadena yet, I'm going up, I don't know, a few hundred feet, not very steep incline. Okay, I'm going about 55 miles an hour. Already the engine is overheating. If you can see that gauge on the left there. Now we're approaching the mountains, which brings us to the second reason I'm replacing the engine, and that's the gutlessness of this 1987 diesel 2H stock Toyota engine. So I'm at almost 3,000 RPM, which is revving the engine high for a diesel. The outside numbers are kilometers per hour. The inside numbers are miles per hour. I don't know if you can read the inside. I'm basically at full throttle. My foot's on the floor and we're going 50 miles an hour up this uh, mountain pass towards Barstow. Yeah, so now I'm driving with the trucks in the low lane at like 45 miles an hour. My thermostat is in the red, which <sighs> I still haven't gotten to the desert yet. I still haven't gotten to the baking hottest place on earth desert. Uh, and if I blow a head gasket out here, I have two gallons of water with me, but then I gotta figure out how to ship this truck from the road to Montana. And then I sort of blow my budget doing that. I blow a big chunk of budget. So I gotta get this thing there. And that's why I've given myself three days for a two day drive. Quinta, just like Louis C.K. Here's a helpful list of places to stay. Oh, great. I get to live in a La Quinta. I've driven this Land Cruiser in the rain maybe three or four times. We'll see what happens. So I've got a little time-lapse camera set up on my temperature gauge. 
so that you can see sort of what my brain is doing on this trip, <laughs> which is don't blow a head gasket, don't blow a head gasket. And sometimes you have to slow down to 35, but thank God these trucks slow down to 35 too so that I don't get rear-ended. So I guess the question is, why the hell do I drive this truck? Why this truck? Why a 1987 diesel Toyota Land Cruiser? And there's no rational explanation. If I was purely rational, I would just drive a Prius. But like Jerry Seinfeld said to Bill Burr when he found out that Bill Burr drove a Prius, have I no soul? And so I think it's three reasons why I drive this car. Three romantic reasons. Irrational. One, there was a dentist's office at the end of my street. The dentist and his wife both had these cars new when I was a kid. One of them had a red one, one of them had a blue one. So sometimes the red one was parked there, sometimes the blue one was parked there, sometimes they were both parked there. So that probably planted the seed. And then, I always was attracted to and had crushes on the private school girls. Isabel's a private school girl. <laughs> there was this private school girl named Martha McConnell and she had an 80 series, which is the, um, the series after this one, the bubbly one. When we were like, you know, 17, it wasn't hers, it was her family's, but she, to me, she had unlimited use of it. And we would cruise around these kids and this thing was like $40,000 in, in 1994 or something like this. And astonishing to me. And also in New York City, when I moved to New York City, there were like two big shots that I had access to, Sean McPherson and Eric Good. And they owned this restaurant called The Park, and it was kind of like a club, and it was the first exclusive place that I could get into. And I remember going to a party there one night, and Matt Damon was there. And Sean McPherson drove a red one of these, I, can't, I think it had the square headlights, I can't remember. And then Eric Good, who was co-owner of the park and he owns the Maritime Hotel, I've worked with him. He holds, a, he holds a high station in my mind. He had when he was young, when he was in his 20s, he had the hottest club in New York City called Area. And every, I think, month, Area cho changed its theme and everyone in the 80s went to Area. It usurped. Studio 54. All the 80s heroes would go to that, and it was it was Eric's creation. So he, when he made a little money, he started a, a turtle conservancy trying to preserve amphibians and reptiles uh, up in Ojai is the headquarters, and he invited Isabel and me up there before X was born, before we had this car, and he had a red Toyota Land Cruiser 62 series and then everywhere I've been you know once I started learning how to travel internationally basically all the really exotic places I've been you know the Sahara Desert or you know Zanzibar or Moshi Tanzania Mikamazi land cruisers land cruisers everywhere on earth. So, I don't know, it's sort of a symbol of success. It's a symbol of fortitude. These things last forever. And um, unfortunately, it's not a symbol of speed. <laughs> this up but there's some kind of foam. What the hell is that? 
Now can you see the foam? It's like snow almost. Maybe it's salt, because it's Salt Lake City. Actually, Provo. But maybe it's salt. Look at this, it looks like I'm driving on snow. I got all-terrain tires, so I'll be fine. Snow, mud, foam. to Isabel last night and I was like you know what this is crazy that I'm driving a thousand miles or so up through the mountains with this risky car and I got a kid and the only thing I can say is that it's fun this is fun I enjoy this I love this The first Land Cruiser ever sold in America. This was a good idea. Driving the truck instead of shipping it. Half as expensive for me to drive it, even with all the food, fuel, hotels. And I think switching the engine is a good idea. So for the last few months, every time there was a strange smell or there was a drops of oil underneath the engine, or I had to, you know, reroute the oil return and it didn't seal up quite right. And is there enough oil in it? Doesn't matter. As long as I make it to Bozeman, none of that stuff matters. Like I smelled something weird at the last gas up and it's like, I don't care. Just gotta, just gotta get it there. So I was just thinking this is a good idea. Getting into the mountains near Yellowstone, just past the sign that said we're at 6,600 feet of altitude. This thing is basically dead on balls. Struggling at 40. Engine's running hotter than a boiling kettle. Welcome to Montana. So this guy just offered to buy my engine. His name's Brant. It's the first one in the wild I've seen on the whole trip. So he just offered to buy my old engine. And I think I'll take him up on that. You have arrived. We made it, man. Overland Outfitters is like a few miles away. Even if the engine blows up right now, they can just tow it there or they can come get it. Good old engine, still got a lot of life in her, but it's time to move on. Goodbye, 2H Turbo. You served me well.
Another dream come true. Now I'm going up and getting my Cummins 2.8 turbo diesel engine. And I've just, you know, for a year, I've been looking at YouTube videos like zero to 60 Cummins R 2.8. And the man, Steven, who owns Overland Cruisers, who's doing the swap, he said he has my exact car with the same setup I'm getting. And he said, no problem over these mountain passes, no problem. 65, no problem. You know, the speed limit's 80 here where I am on 15. And uh, I'm going about 66 right now, but struggling at 45 over the passes. And where's my, yeah, and I'm right on the border of overheating, even though it's raining and kind of cool out. Oh no. All right, push the. <laughs> so the car won't start. <laughs> no, it, it does this. It does. This is one of the th first things that inspired the new engine. Come on, sweetheart. <laughs> This week on the Patreon, a conversation with one of my peers. The link is right there.